Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and I'm still taking you through that 2021 external exam for general maths in Queensland. I'm going to be looking at the short response and multiple choice questions on the financial mathematics topic, which is probably everybody's least favourite topic. I'm going to combine those together because there weren't that many on this part of paper one. So here's our question, question 15, it's multiple choice. Which of the following investment options gives us the best return? We can see there's four different percentages. They're only slightly different by about two hundredths of a percent. And they all have different compounding periods, daily, monthly, quarterly, six monthly. You'll notice that there's no principal that's been invested and no length of time that it's being invested. We're just simply comparing four rates. And the best way for us to do that is to use our effective interest rate formula, which is provided to us on our formula sheet. So all we really need to do is apply this four times. Now you don't need to show working for multiple choice. You can simply write answers down. So if you know how to use your calculator, you can use that effectively. You can do that fairly quickly. So let's start with option A. We're simply substituting in 0 0.0593. Now we need to actually change that into a decimal by dividing the percentage by 100. And then we're gonna divide that by 365 because it's compounded daily and our power is 365. So it's the only things we need to substitute into our formula on our calculator, and we get a rate of 0 0.061088. You actually don't need to change that into a percentage at this stage. I would write it down though, with as many decimal places as you can, probably on your paper, just so that you um, can compare the four rates once you've done that. Let's repeat that process for option B. We're actually compounding monthly this time, which is a power of 12. So we write that up there next to option B. Quarterly means we're compounding with four periods per year, and that gives us a rate of 0 0.061. They're all very similar looking rates, which you'd expect because they're not overly different. And 5.99% per annum six monthly, that means two compounding periods. Option D gives us a rate of 0 0.060797. Now, a lot of people probably wouldn't want to do that amount of work for a multiple choice question, but you could see you could probably punch that on a calculator in under about a minute and a half, which is the amount of time you should be allocating to a multiple choice question. I think a lot of people would be tempted to guess, and people would be guessing, in my opinion, probably guessing that option A, that's where I first thought if I was going to guess, I'd guess this one was going to be the best best return, meaning that the interest rate is the highest with this one, simply because it's compounding daily. And people would think, oh, compounding daily, that's a lot more compounding. The power of 365 is a lot more than a power of 12. So a lot of people might be tempted just to jump in and guess A and move on without doing any of the work. But as you can see, that little 0.02 of a percent makes quite a bit of difference because we here we've got 0 0.06, that's the same, one's the same, but hang on, that's a zero and that's a one. So the monthly compounding is actually better than the daily compounding in this instance. Now, if you've done that there, then you might wanna have a guess and draw a conclusion and say, right, well, as it's going up at 0.2 of a percent, it's getting better and better and better. So I'm just gonna guess option D. But as you can see, option D is actually the worst option. 060610. You can see it's the worst option out of all of the four options. So guessing is not going to help you here. You actually need to do the work. So now we're actually going to compare um, just these ones here. 616110. That means B is the highest. So you've really got to pay attention to each of those decimal parts of that one and make a really close comparison. B is our answer for question 15. Now we've moved off now the multiple choice into the paper, paper one, and we're now doing some uh, financial mathematics questions with short responses. This one's four marks. Determine the monthly payment on a reducing balance loan of, of $720,000 at 4.8% per annum over 25 years. Give your answer to the nearest dollar. Now, if you look at your formula sheet in Queensland, you'll see there's only one formula on there for a reducing balance loan, and it is the um, formula for a recurrence relation. Now, a recurrence relation is not gonna help you find the monthly repayment, which is capital R, and that's how that's represented on that particular formula. It's not gonna help you find it. Um, all it's gonna help you find is an amount after a certain period of time, or a recurrence relation will help you work out how long it takes to get to zero. That's a lot of um, button pressing there with monthly repayments over 25 years. But it's not gonna help you find the repayment. There's only two formulas on your formula sheet 
that actually have a repayment amount on there where you can actually find it and that's the letter M. And we find that in our annuity formulas. You'd recall, if you were listening in class, that a reducing balance loan is a type of annuity. So here are our two options in Queensland. We've got two formulas and if we were to rearrange or transpose these equations, we could make M the subject and then we could find the value of this monthly repayment. The question is though, which formula do we use? There's two to choose from. You've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. Both of them have got M in the formula. Which formula do we go for? Well, we might remember that this one here is future value and this one's present value. The way I like to remember it is all about the indices that give us the clue. So if you look at our indices up here, we've got N is a positive number, N is a negative number. So in the future, it's um, growing. The future hasn't happened yet. If you were to graph the future, it would be on the positive side of an axis. The past is behind us. On a timeline, that would be negative. And the present, it already just gone in a, in a second. It's already passed. So it's the negative numbers. That's how I remember it. You might have a better way. Why not share in the comments how you remember the difference between the two formulas on your formula sheet? Now, for these kinds of questions, you might not be able to remember a reducing balance loan. Do I use future value or do I use present value? Well, here's another clue. If it's got a positive power, payments are going into the annuity. So these are situations like a superannuation fund where you're putting money in every month after you get paid towards your future. So payments going in is a positive. If payments are coming out, we have a negative power, taking out money from our annuity. So we have situations, for example, like a reducing balance loan. Now you might say, well, I'm putting money in, I'm paying it off, but you're actually paying it off. You're trying to reduce the balance. So those repayments actually are reducing your debt. They're payments out of your bank account into the loan. A payment, another type of um, annuity is a payment um, where you're taking money out of an investment for your future, like paying yourself a pension. So that's how I remember the difference between the powers. Once again, you might have a better way of remembering it. Why not share? Okay, so because of that, we know that we have to use this formula. It's got the negative power because those payments are coming out of our bank account in a negative way. They're coming out to debt, which is not a positive thing. Okay, of course though, it can be positive when it buys us something wonderful like a house. So the very next step now that we've chosen a formula is to state our variables. In this question, we've got three variables, I, N and A. So I needs to be translated firstly into a decimal from the percentage. So we divide that by 100 and we get 0 0.048. But we also need to work out a monthly um, compounding rate. So we're gonna divide that by 12 which gives us 0.004. Now we need to look at N. There's 25 years and their monthly repayments. So 12 times 25 gives us 300 payments over the 25 years. That's a lot of repayments. And for actually stating or calculating I and N correctly, you earned your first mark for this question. We've also got another variable, which is A. $720,000. So now that we've got our variables, we need to substitute that into the annuity present value formula. So once that's substituted, it's going to look like that. It's a bit yucky and you need to really work this out in small steps. So actually substituting that into that rule there got you another mark if you chose the right rule. So if you chose the wrong rule, you're going to lose a mark out of four marks. So it's still worth picking a rule anyway, even if you get it wrong. But have a think first, then you can get four out of four. Okay, now that we're doing that, we're working out some of this information just little by little. And we've worked out that everything in the brackets comes to 174.52 with lots of decimal places. That's what the dot, dot, dots means. We're going to divide that by both sides and our value for our repayment will be $4,125.58. Determining that payment got us our third mark, but we're only three marks into four. Have a look at the question. It tells us we need to give our answer to the nearest dollar. So we do need to write a statement at the end and round that up to $4,126 for our fourth and final mark with the correct rounding. I guarantee you lots of students probably missed reading that little part and wrote a statement but gave two decimal places. So you need to really read your question carefully. And here's the last question on this paper on decision math on financial mathematics. 
Rosa borrowed $32,000 as a reducing balance loan. Ugh, another reducing balance loan at 4.8% per annum compounding monthly with monthly repayments of $278. How much will Rosa owe after two months to the nearest cent? Now, you can actually jump in and use your annuity formulas again for this, but I actually think it's a lot quicker and a lot easier to actually use your recurrence relation on your formula sheet. And that's why understanding when you use each formula is really important. So in this particular situation, the recurrence relation looks like this. And what it helps us do is work out the balance at the end of a certain number of payments. We've only got to work it out after two payments. So that's pretty easy. So let's start again by stating our variables. We've got our interest rate. We need to change that into a monthly compounded rate of 0 0.004. And then what we need to do is we need to add to that the number one, because remember in this formula, R is not the same as the interest rate. It's the interest rate plus one. Now, if you correctly change that into a rate per compounding period, you got your first mark. Now, the next step, we've also got our, our value of the loan at time zero is 32,000 and our repayment capital R is $278 from the question. So now we can simply substitute this into the formula and we're going to have 1.004 times 32,000. What that's doing is adding the interest to the loan and then taking the repayment out. So it's a two-step process. Once we do that, once we've substituted that into an appropriate rule, this is an appropriate rule, we get our first mark and we've worked out our balance after one month. Now we need to work out the balance after two months. So we're basically going to now substitute this number back into the formula again um, to work out A2. So you'll notice here is the change. Here's our starting amount for the loan. After one month, we now owe this much. And now we put the amount that we now owe into the recurrence relation. And because we use that in the second step, we get our third mark. And then finally, we're going to find that our value after two months is $31,699.40. Now, it's asked us to write a statement to the nearest cent because that's our rounding. It's different to the previous question, which was nearest dollar. This time, it's nearest cent. On your calculator, 0.4 will not have any numbers afterwards. But remember, money has two decimal places. The nearest cent implies we need that second decimal place. So if you just write 31,699.4, you're not writing it to the nearest cents. You've written it to the nearest 10 cents. You need to make sure that you write it to the 40 cents, two decimal places. Well, that was our fourth mark for that question. And that's all the questions we had on financial mathematics in this particular paper in 2021. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, why not tell someone or share it in the comments with us? And I'd like to say a huge welcome to all of our new subscribers. And if you are wanting to subscribe, just hit that bell, hit the notifications button, like and subscribe to the channel. And that way, like these clever people here, you'll always know when there's a new video. So welcome and thanks for joining us. And we're about to hit the 2000 subscribers mark, which is pretty incredible in my mind. Thank you so much for all the love, everybody. If you've got any questions about anything you saw today, you could contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com or message us directly on Facebook and Instagram. Follow us on your socials, that way you'll stay in touch there too. Well, thank you so much for watching. I'm Natalie McClutching and you've been watching McClutchy Mass. Have a wonderful day.